we'll begin with an opening comment from Coach Riley, and then we'll hop into questions. Coach? All right, yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for joining on today. Um, yeah, it's been, been, been a good journey with this team. Certainly excited as, as we get a little bit closer here to, to game week. I, I think for our team, this is, this is all starting to feel a little bit more real. And so that's been, a, I, I think, a big positive uh, for us right now is, is you know, there's, there's kind of that game in sight now. Um, and, and you can tell uh, a difference for the team and the way we're practicing, guys getting, getting better quickly. So it's been, been fun to start to feel that, that game coming closer. Uh, also uh, been, been positive on the, uh, on the uh, you know, COVID front. Uh, we've we've uh, been able to, to, to get a lot of those guys back that, that were affected um, you know, several weeks back. So it's been, been good to have a few more bodies out there um, and had a, had a pretty successful last couple of weeks, um, certainly as, as, uh, as far as the, the COVID, the procedures, the testing, all that. And it's, it's uh, settled down and been, been an outstanding last couple of weeks. So certainly, uh, you know, going to have to continue that. As we've said before, it's going to be a, a week to week deal. Um, uh, also made a decision, Spencer Rattler will start uh, the season at quarterback. Uh, been a little bit different competition. Uh, Spencer, you know, I think he's played, played very well and, and certainly I think he's very deserving of it. Um, you know, disappointed for Tanner Mordecai. He missed, had to end up missing about 70 to 75 percent of fall camp, you know, which uh, obviously severely uh, limited his reps or, um, you know, true opportunities to, to really go, go play his best ball and, and have a shot at it. But I mean, that's, that's football, you know, whether it's an injury or, as we know in this climate right now, with, with COVID and all the different ways that, that can knock guys out of, of you know playing time, uh, practice time, all of that, that's something that each and every team at a lot of different positions is going to have to deal with. So um, he'll he'll be ready to bounce back. It's been good to have him back at practice, and and you know feel like we've got two very competent competent players uh, there at the quarterback position. So uh, with that, we'll take questions. Okay, we'll begin with Eric Bailey from Tulsa World and then Ryan Aber. Eric? Hey, Lincoln, your, your last three starting quarterbacks have, have had different styles of leadership. Uh, they all had previous starting experience when they assumed their role. What kind of leader have you seen in Spencer, and is it any way comparable to what you had with Baker, Kyler, and Jalen? Um, they're all a little bit different. Uh, probably – yeah, it's hard to compare. I mean, there's some bits and pieces of all of them. I, I don't know that, you know, probably a little, he's definitely different than Jalen, probably a little bit more outgoing, maybe somewhere in between Kyler and Baker a little bit. Um, but, but yeah, as a, you know, natural confidence and, and uh, kind of charisma about himself, um, you know, and, and always, he seems to always have a lot of confidence regardless of the situation that he's in, which I think is key for, for anybody at that position. So I, I think his, his confidence and belief in himself, you know, his teammates, uh, you know, I, I think that's the that's the thing that I, I would say stands out the most about him right now. And and uh, you know, and he's he's never been afraid of the moment, um, which again for for young players, that's that's a key thing. And I don't know that that's really coached. That's just something that you guys either have or they don't at a young age. Thanks, Lincoln. Okay, let's go to Ryan Aber with uh, the Oklahoman, and then Joe Bettner. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, obviously this quarterback race is a lot different for a lot of reasons. And, and you mentioned, the, you know, Tanner missing all that time. I know you're confident in Spencer Rattler, but do you, do you feel like you had enough uh, data, enough uh, time seeing these guys to make this decision? Or uh, is it just a, a timeline thing where you sort of have to do it, you know, here pretty quick? Yeah, no, I kind of went through all those, you know, scenarios. I mean, this one's – like we said before, this one is so new and unprecedented for so many reasons. So you're just kind of taking it as it comes and trying to make the best decision. I mean, you know, I, I, Spencer certainly has has performed well enough to, to be the starter. There's no question about that. Um, sure, just the the competitor and you and, and the and the coach who who loves competition. You'd love to have seen every single player here healthy for every practice and getting the same amount of reps, the same amount of coaching experience, all that. Um, but that's just, it's never reality in football. And then this year, more than others, I mean, there's not one position that we don't have 
some of that as well. And again, whether it's been an injury, whether it's been a, a COVID related um, absence, we're dealing with that all over the place. You've got some guys that have had five practices, some guys that have had 10, some guys that have had 20. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of a, kind of a moving target. So I think you just got to deal with it the best you can. Um, and as far as making the decision now, I uh, just felt like there was an, enough separation right now and, and felt like that just kind of for our offense that, that it was important to give us a, an opportunity to, you know, have, you know, this mock game week, which we're in right now, and then, a, and then a, a, another full week of game week, uh, just because not only is all this COVID stuff new, we're also operating on a little bit different schedule than what we've done in the past, practicing in the mornings a little bit more. So just felt like for all those reasons, it was, it was the right time. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And let's go to Joe Bettner with the Norman transcript and then Jason Kersey. Hey, Lincoln. I uh, was just curious. You mentioned how you know outgoing Spencer is. And I'm curious, how have the guys gravitated maybe toward him as you know being a guy that's only been in the system for a year? I'm curious just what his leadership has been like and how those teammates have seen him throughout practice as being a guy that can be your you know, starting quarterback. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't know that it would be too much different than the answer previously. I mean, I think they see uh, confidence and, and um, you know, a, a joy or, you know, kind of love of competing. Um, you know, and a guy that's, uh, you know, has, has grown up. He's, he's, you know, addressed some of the areas that he needs to improve on. Not that he doesn't have a lot to grow. He obviously has a ton. But um, so, no, I think they've appreciated that about him. I mean, our – I really feel like our team has a lot of confidence in that room. Um, I feel like our our guys don't don't really miss a beat with anybody in that room. That's a credit to those guys. And uh, so, uh, but Spencer's yeah, he's I mean he's done a good job. He's 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 been himself, you know, and he's he's pretty. He kind of is who he is on the field, and I, I think they respect that about him um, and the way he goes about his business. Okay, we'll go to Jason Kersey at The Athletic and then Caleb McCory. Yeah, Lincoln, you offered Spencer Rattler a scholarship, I think, when he was a sophomore in high school. Is that earlier than you typically like to offer quarterbacks? And if so, like, what did you see in him to, to make you pull the trigger on that offer that early? Yeah, I think it was the spring of his freshman year. Um, yeah, oh, I just okay. – yeah, no, I don't. I, rarely do we ever offer anybody, anybody at any position at that age, much less a quarterback. But no, I, 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 I liked what I saw on tape. I thought, you know, the level of ball he was playing, playing against some pretty good competition. Um, some of the things he did as a freshman, um, you know, and a young guy that probably wasn't physically ready for all that. Some of the things he did there were impressive. You could see he you know, a, a strong natural ability to throw the football and process and kind of a playmaking ability. So I liked him. And then uh, once I got a chance to go out and, and see him live that spring, um, you know, got to kind of see and confirm some of the things I saw on film. I, I just, you know, I felt like, I felt like he had all the skills necessary if he continued to develop them, um, that he was going to have a chance to be a really good player and would have a chance to be a successful player, you know, for us. And so, and even when we offered him, it was, uh, you know, look, we're offering you right now, but you know, th this is uh, this is based on some of what we see, but also a little bit of a projection too. So, you know, if you want that offer to stand, it's you're going to have to continue to improve. You still got a long ways to go, and and uh, and we, you know, anytime we offer somebody that young, that's something we talk to them about. Is this is, you know, this is you've got to continue to progress and improve, um, and uh, and felt like he did through the years. Thanks. Hey, okay, Caleb McCory of the OU Daily and then Cliff Brunt. Hey, Coach. Uh, this is just a hypothetical, and God forbid this were to happen, but let's say you were to test positive before a game. What's what's the game plan for game day? Uh, honestly, sadly, still waiting on that. No, nothing from the NCAA. Um, nothing really from our conference on that. So I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, we've got – We've got contingencies in place for whatever they decide. You know, I know there's been talks of, you know, do you allow a a separate coach's box, you know, for anybody that that you know has tested positive, uh, you know, to still be able to coach. Um, I can't, you know, pass that. I can't imagine anybody being able to be involved in game day operations. So, you know, if it goes that way, we've got a plan, and if it goes 
to where myself or any other coach wasn't there. We've got a plan for, for each and every one of them. So hopefully we'll find out something here soon so we know which way to go. And hopefully we don't have to have that conversation. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cliff Brown with AP and then John Hoover. Uh, Coach, just wondering if your running back situation has cleared itself up a little bit. You got a lot of guys in that room, a lot of guys with talent. Just how is that looking, and has anybody emerged ahead of the others? Uh, yeah, it's a good room. Um, it's, it's it's definitely a good room. I mean, I, I think you know, TJ Pledger setting the pace right now. You know, in that room, he's he's really practiced well. He's been our most consistent um, consistent player. Uh, I think he's in the best shape that he's been in here, healthy, just really, really, you know, doing some nice things. So, and then um, I think all of us are, are gaining a lot of confidence and obviously Ramondre's got some game experience and, and has, you know, has some very, very, very good skill set. No question, he's gonna be a big factor. Um, and then gaining a lot of confidence in, in Marcus Major and and, uh, and Seth McGowan. So I feel like it's a, uh, it's a good group. It's a talented group. They're getting all getting a lot of reps. They're all getting better quickly. Um, you know, I feel like, I mean, you can certainly foresee scenarios where all those guys have not only just a role, but a big role on this football team. Okay, we'll go to John Hoover and then James Hale. Hey, Lincoln, uh, curious about Spencer. What specific areas would you say that he's shown really the most growth when you think back to his freshman season? What areas has he really developed? And then did he really attack whatever weaknesses he might have had? Yeah, I, I, I think that's fair to say. I, I would say his just knowledge of, of our offense and, and what we want to do and why we're doing things and, and just the – kind of understanding the whole picture there has probably been the biggest area of improvement. Um, you know, and that's that's just taking his preparation. And I don't know that it was any different than most young quarterbacks that come in, but it's the level of preparation at this level to, to play that position, you know, the way we expect is, is, you know, I don't care what high school you came out of. This is a different deal. And uh, it's, a, it's a big step up for everybody. So I think it was, you know, positive for him to, you know, have seen – you know, seeing the way Jalen prepared, uh, you know, to you know be able to know, you know, especially Kyler a little bit, and and the way those guys worked, I think it set a good example for all the guys in our room. But he's, uh, you could tell Spencer's grown up some, which I mean, again, that's not anything earth shattering. Guys are supposed to come here and grow up some. That's that's part of the deal. But I think he, I think he has. Um, I, I think his preparation has continued to improve, and I think he's he's mentally in a in a you know in a in a good place as far as his progression in our offense. So, you know, the physical skills have been there, playmaking ability has been there, but it's, uh, and it's just really cleaned a lot of things up. So, you know, it's, as with any player, and especially one that young, there's still, you know, there's still going to be a, a ton of growth that, that's going to happen, but I, I think he's on a, a good trajectory right now. Thank you. Let's go to James Hale with KRF and then Barry Trammell. Lincoln, this is going to be such a unique year with COVID uh, 2020 that your entire depth is probably going to uh, have to be used or you're going to have to, you know, at least get it ready. So as you had your second scrimmage and things, what young players are standing out to you and what players maybe we haven't seen a lot of caught your eye uh, during practice up to this point, because this may be a year you got to play everybody on your roster. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been, Fun to see. I would say this this recruiting class as a whole. Uh, you know, talk about the new guys that just came in. I, I I think one of the exciting things for us right now is you look at every single player, and some of them are at different points, but every single player had, has got a shot. I mean, no doubt. I mean, even you got some that are, you know, I think ready to help this football team this year, and you know, got a chance to to continue to press on and 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 do very well. Um, You've got some that may be, you know, a, a short time away, but I don't feel like we've got anybody that's a long, long ways away. And that's, you know, so I think that's a, just top to bottom. The, the class, we've, we've been really pleased with where that class is at and the opportunity that they're all going to have. Um, yeah, as far as standouts, I mean, there's, I mean, they kind of all have their bright moments, you know, and then they, they all, you know, sometimes look like freshmen, uh, you know, but there's, uh, 
No, there's definitely been some guys that really prove it. I would say some guys on the roster that have, that have stood out. You know, Bray Walker's, you know, had a really nice camp. Um, you know, I mentioned, you know, TJ Pledger and, you know, the, the job that, that he's done. He's, he's certainly been uh, an impressive guy. You know, been impressed with our, our two, you know, transfer receivers. They've, they've done some – done some really nice things. Uh, Brian Osamoa is, is, is a player that's been much improved, I think, on the on the defensive side. Uh, again, I don't know I said this before, been been pleased with Robert Barnes and Jamal Morris. I think they've they've been certainly a bright spot, that transition from from them from uh, the secondary down to down to linebacker. Uh, I, I think much, much improved there. Jay Cradell is a guy that stood out and has has, has really continued to improve as well. Um, Isaiah Thomas has had a really strong camp. I've uh, been very, very pleased with him. Um, you know, rush position, I think, is, is continuing to get better and better, you know, between Nick Benito, John Michael Terry. Those guys, I think, are, are quite a bit better football players than, than where they were at. So, again, there's, you know, I could all, darn near go through everybody on the roster, and, and, and there's a level of excitement about the majority of our players, and now it's just, you know, continuing to take them through the progression. So, um, Certainly more excited about than than not, but a lot of work yet to be done. Thanks, Lincoln. Okay, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman, and then Bob Prisbillo. Yeah, Lincoln, when you look at Baker, when Baker started here, he had some experience. Kyler had a little. Jalen had a lot. These guys don't have any. Are you having to coach different? And is your expectation level tempered by the fact that for the first time ever, you don't, you, you, these guys have zero experience on the college field? Um, no, I think I always coach different. I mean, I think it's, you coach the guys that you have and, and every player that you have in there is going to have different strengths, weaknesses, experience levels, experience level. And, and I've, I've said this many times about this group, you, you got, kind of two levels of experience you've got on the field game experience and you've got experience level within our system uh, running our plays and so you know it's kind of varied levels all over as you mentioned but I think always coach different um, I think guys learn differently guys need different things guys have different strengths and weaknesses so I, I, it doesn't feel different there um, uh, but you know we were always going to try to attack the areas that we think that they need to improve on the most uh, as far as expectations, different? No. I mean, uh, these guys are more than capable of running this offense and playing the position the way, you know, we expect it to be played. And, and uh, I think they're, you know, they're going to they're gonna do some really good things. I think we've got some good players around them. And uh, our expectations for how they play and, and for how our offense plays uh, have certainly not changed. Hey, Bob Bruce Bill with Sooner Scoop and then Brandon Drum. Yeah, Lincoln, NCAA recently ruled that no matter what happens this year, no one's losing the year eligibility. First of all, do you agree with that? And secondly, any suggestions on scholarship limits or what the, the steps that are going to have to be taken to try to make this happen smoothly moving forward? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a decision they made. I mean, any decision they were going to make was going to have some positives and negatives to it. So I don't know that there is a, a right one. I mean, I'm happy for our players and all the players across college football. It, it's, a, it's a huge win for them. Uh, at some point, this is going to be a loss for the, the high school player um, because there is going to be a trickle-down effect here. Um, and, and at some point, your roster's – uh, you know, it sounds like after the first year, your rosters are going to have to, you know, get back down to the normal 85 limit, which is, uh, you know, going to provide some challenges. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a big decision. Uh, you certainly understand why the decision was made. There's going to be a lot of uh, repercussions of that decision, and, and it's going to take a lot of work by schools, legis legislative branches, I mean, everybody to, to figure this out because it's uh, um, it's it's going to – it's going to create some different situations than we've ever been in. So we're going to have to work together to figure it out. Okay, let's go to Brandon Drum with OU Insider. Hey, Lincoln, appreciate you doing this. Uh, you talked about Spencer Rattler. You named him the starting quarterback. But the other guys, Tanner Mordecai, uh, Chandler Morris, um, how confident are you in them as far as their overall understanding and progression as well? 
I guess, in the offense and uh, just total mentality. Extremely, extremely. I, I don't, I don't know that there's a quarterback room in America that that you know that I would rather have. I mean, I just I I, I love the room. I love the competitiveness. I love the the skill level that we have in there. Um, you know, and you know, you mentioned you know Tanner and the job he's done here. Uh, I've been very pleased with Chandler Morris, the way he's prepared and the ability he's shown. And then, you know, and then Tanner Schaefer in our room has kind of been a longstanding guy that's that's a very valuable member of our room as well. So, I mean, it's a it's a very good room. And, uh, you know, we certainly know, and each and every year this can happen, uh, but certainly know you're going to, you know, you're going to need everybody in that room some way, somehow this year. And uh, so I think it's a room that, gives us a chance to, to win and a chance to play very well with a lot of different guys in there. Um, so a lot of a very, very, very high confidence level in that group right now. Coach, I've got three more in the queue. Do you have time to knock those out? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, let's go to uh, Garen Emig of the Tulsa World and then Keegan Rennell. Uh, <clears throat> Lincoln, real quick, could, could you just clarify, did, did Tanner miss the, the, so much camp time because of COVID, or was was there an injury, or or what was it that was kept that kept him out? Um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know that I'd want to go there with it, um, but but he's he's back full go with us right now. Okay, question would be, do you feel better knowing you have experience on an offensive line coming into a, a new season, or uh, experience at quarterback, game experience? That does one matter more than the other in your mind? Uh, they're both, you know, they're both helpful. Um, I think the thing you don't want, you maybe don't want to have neither. Um, so, you know, it's great that we have, certainly have one. And, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think there's definitely more competition, more game experience. I mean, there's, you know, expectations are high for how we, how we need to play on the offensive line. And, you know, that's whether a quarterback's played him two games or he's played in 20 games, having a great offensive line is your, you know, is your best friend. And so that's certainly, uh, you know, we certainly got expect high expectations for how that group can and, and will play. And, and that obviously is going to have a direct impact on our quarterback play as well. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, our last two questions will go to Keegan Renault of Sooners Wire and then Kerry Murdoch. Yeah, Lincoln, I know Baker talked about how important it was for him to sit um, that one year whenever he uh, was here in 2014. Just how important was it for Spencer to sit behind Jalen specifically just with his leadership and uh, work ethic he had? Yeah, no, it was a great learning experience for him. I mean, they're, they're two very different personalities, but there's still so much you can take, you know, from, from especially a guy that had been in the fire as much as Jalen had. So, no, I think it was a – a learning experience and not that you'll take every single thing that, that somebody did, but I do think there's a ton of positive points. And, and uh, I think the time was, is, a, is always important for a young quarterback just to kind of see how this thing works and how do you install and how do you game plan and what's this process like and how do you lead and the ups and downs and to be able to, to get a feel for that and be in the middle of it without everything, you know, kind of, you know, without so much of it falling on your shoulders um, at that point is a, is a great thing. But, but they got to use it the right way. And uh, I feel like our, our, our young quarterbacks have. Thank you. Final question to Kerry Murdoch of Sooner Scoop and Sports Animal. Lincoln, you mentioned just how positive it's been in practices because they can kind of see the games. Uh, we saw a game this weekend. It, it looked like it was, you know, for the most part, played really well. Is it? I don't know if you ever thought like college football is going to be kind of ugly this year, but it, does it give you hope that this is going to kind of look like for the fans what they're used to looking like or what they're seeing? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No, I think the quality of ball will be will be very good. Um, you know, the, the one elephant in the room, the one question that you can't answer on that is, is you know, what impact does, does COVID have if we go through this? You know, and all of a sudden if you pop in there and lose – you know, a, a lot of people and, and still attempt to play a football game, then, then you know, it's obviously the quality of ball is not going to be quite as high. doesn't mean it's not playable, not doable, not still, you know, work the competition, fun to watch, all that. But that's that's the one outlier. I mean, if, you know, if we're, if we're able to not lose a mass of people, you know, we're going to be able to play good football. And I would imagine a lot of people uh, will be able to as well.